1958 because I had a knee injury. What? Um, and yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. And I was a, I was a real uh, kind of active kid, and my father said the only way we're going to keep this kid uh, in, in place is to give him something to bang on. So uh, he said, yeah, he said, how would you like to play the drums? And I said, well, that's that's pretty that's great because I've run out of pots and pans to bang on. <laughs> um, so they, uh, my dad sent me. Uh, my dad sent me to Gene Krupa School in Gene Krupa Cozy Cole School in Manhattan, and I stayed there for a while, a couple of years, and then uh, and it's on from there. Uh, played in Greenwich Village, uh, played all over the New York metropolitan area, and uh, moved on after that. Uh, played everything and uh, kind of dropped out for a while in the 70s, and then picked it up a little bit later. But uh, it was a great beginning, and it all started because uh, I had to stay off my legs for a year. Wow, that's a good story. Uh, how about you, Woody? I started on accordion when I was eight. Ooh. Wow. Ten lessons, went to piano. I lasted right. six months. By the time I got to junior high school, and this is up in Ohio, uh, I went to a uh, presentation by the high school band director in our district. And he had this shiny, shiny instrument. I wanted to play it. It was called the saxophone. Hmm. And so I picked up saxophone. Now you got to remember, these are back in the days when, it, it, to, in order to get into the musician union, you had to audition. You had to be able to play several instruments if you played saxophone. You had to play flute and clarinet. That was a requirement. So young musicians coming up there. They're brainwashed with this, with this information. It's, oh God! If I want to be a professional musician, I have to learn all this stuff. So that's what I did. Right. And in the meantime, when I got through high school, I was all, I was started writing. By the time I was 19, I went to the Air Force not only as an instrumental soloist but as a composer and arranger. All right. Um, now, uh, the jazz congregation is a variety of combinations. As a trio, a quartet, quintet, and even sextet, how does the instrumentation expand? How does the size of the group affect the repertoire that you play? Well, when we when we move into a quartet, we generally move in with either a sideman, a saxophone player, or a vocalist. Okay. Uh, or two vocalists, two horns. Um, we can go with uh, trumpet and saxophone. We can build on anything depending on what the, the job requires. Okay. Uh, and, and that's how we build it. Now, you perform with three different vocalists. How does the repertoire change with each singer? Uh, well, I don't know. We, we kind of have... Uh, each gal is, is different in, their, in, in her presentation. Uh, they sing a lot of the same songs. But they do them in different arrangements. Different arrangements with different key. Yeah. In different oh, okay. Key, which is where I come in because I have to make sure that all everybody's on the same page. Right? Okay. Um, and you and the jazz congregation play at a variety of venues, from small nightclubs to large affairs. Which are your some of your favorite venues to play, and why? Well. We just finished a run at the Edison, which is a, a really nice room in Fort Myers. Um, that's fun, and we'll be back there shortly. Uh, and we, we just started tonight, as a matter of fact, at Geo's restaurant in, uh, in Cape Coral, All right. Pine Island Road. And it looks like a wonderful venue, and it looks like we're going to have a wonderful time here.